I am bringing this gopher snake over to a rock where I can release it. This is the second installation of looking for snakes up in Northern California. All right, here we are. Here we have a ringneck snake, Diadophus punctatus, that I found underneath a rock. And the ones in this area seem to have a sort of olive green-ish coloring. They seem to be lighter than the ones I usually see, at least. Uh, though the ventral side looks to be more or less the same. And speaking of the ventral side, here is the coil that these oftentimes make. I don't know if these colors are supposed to be aposematic, um, but ringnecks are not really known to defend themselves uh, much. Off you go. We've got a California king snake in here. This one's a juvenile, but probably not born this year because it is starting to get some length on it. I'm a big fan of these brakes on the top of the snake here. I've never seen them near the head. Really cool. And if there are brakes near the head, then on the other side there should be brakes in the white. There you go. There it is. And where there aren't any brakes, there aren't any brakes on the bottom. So I've noticed in many, many California king snakes. I will let this guy slide back under the rock. Here is a juvenile yellow-bellied racer, and I don't think that this species has been on the channel before. And this juvenile right here will look much different uh, when it's older. As you can see, the small ones, like this one, have little spots and whatnot. Uh, they have a, a pattern of sorts, but the adults don't have any patterning whatsoever. Their ventral and dorsal side are a different color, and that's about it. I'll see if I can find an adult later, which shouldn't be too tough. Here's a sharp-tailed snake, Contia tenuis, and I haven't given this species much of any representation on this channel, mostly because it doesn't look all that amazing. It looks like a random East Coast fossorial snake, but the belly is pretty cool as you just saw. And yeah, it was under this tin. Here we have a tiger centipede with its head in the dirt. I'm surprised it's not immediately active. There we go. Oh, there's a snake back there. A little gopher snake. Been seeing quite a few of these. This particular gopher snake um, is in shed, and the way we can tell is it has cloudy eyes. Uh, there we go. There is cloudy eyes. You know, oftentimes when I find snakes like this, they're quite aggressive because they don't really have a sense of what's going on around them as much as they normally do. But this guy hasn't tried to bite me a single time, even though some other neonates that I've found recently have been quite nippy. This guy can go back under his rock. I had mentioned earlier that these snakes aren't really known to be all that defensive, but I would like to say um, they are actually venomous, and sometimes if you hold them uh, long enough, you'll see like little drops of venom forming on the outside of their mouth. Uh, that being said, I've only ever heard of one person getting bitten, and the bite was quite mild. Managed to pick a tarantula, a Phonopelma iodius, out of a hole in the ground. And it's safe to say that it wasn't very happy with me, so I had to hold it in this chokehold, so to speak, even though that's not what I'm doing. So, while I had the opportunity, there are its chillers three. Look at this crazy yellow-bellied racer. It's trying to bite me. And um, the reason it's so crazy right now, can't really tell unless I get to stay still, it's in shed. It has cloudy eyes and some of its skin is actually coming off over there next to its head. He's mostly chilled now though. And there you can see the blue eyes even more clearly. This guy can uh, leave now. And sh he should be fairly quick. Very fast snake. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. Hmm, what you doing there? Go. Oh. I don't know what this guy's doing, come on. I don't know what this behavior is. I've never seen this before. Usually these racers are just like off. They just go. I don't know what this kind of defense is. 
Although it is musking right now. Very strange. Plain dead. A racer plain dead. Imagine. Or not. Maybe not. I don't know. Very strange. There's a little Pacific Northwestern rattlesnake here. A Norpak. Just out on the crawl. A knee in it. Very small. Only has two buttons, too. Yeah. It's gone now. Well, you can just barely see it in there. But I'll leave it alone. A little gopher snake here. Tiny one. A knee in it. Well, I've been seeing quite a few gopher snakes, so no need to hold on to this one for too long. I will let him go back to doing his thing. Just go under there. There you go. This is a forest sharp-tailed snake, um, Contia longicaudae, and this is the first one I've ever seen. If it is actually um, Contia longicaudae, I'm, I'm not sure how to identify them. And I'm somewhere near the contact range for the two species, so it could be tenuous, but I don't know. I, um, I have a feeling that this is um, the correct identification, and this is the forest sharp tail. This is also one of uh, California's smallest snakes. This is an adult right here. It could get a little bit larger, sure, um, but generally they sort of max out at around this size. And look, when you want to get a small snake like this to stay still for like a photo or something, it's quite easy. Just put your hand down. For most of them, it works at least. And then when I move my hand away, it's gonna be all coiled up. There you go. And then maybe I can flip it over. All right, this guy can go back into his forest habitat. Look who we have hanging out in here. A northern alligator lizard, the first one I've seen this year. It's been a long time. And a ringneck snake down there. And uh, this one was just sitting exactly where you're seeing it now, underneath a little piece of bark on the edge of a log. And I found um, that in the range of the northern alligator lizard, as opposed to the southern alligator lizard, it's much easier to find these Diadophus punctatus. Um, they like it in the more humid forest edge environments like we have here. Anyway, I'm gonna let these guys go back to what they were doing. This is the first time I've ever flipped a dead centipede that wasn't already decaying. Like this one must have died within the past 24 hours or so. It looks really fresh. It's a really nice one too. It's unfortunate. Really blue. There's a king snake on the crawl in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Watch. It's exactly for that reason that not only should you look where you're walking because you may encounter some rattlesnakes if you're in regions where rattlesnakes occur, but you should also watch where you're stepping because yes, you may accidentally step on a snake that is more or less defenseless, like this one. If I hadn't watched where I was walking, I could have stepped on it. But when I'm walking through fields, I'm always looking down to avoid crushing um, sensitive plants, especially flowering plants and snakes and other animals. As always with these king snakes, where there's normal banding on the top, there's normal banding on the bottom. And where there's breaks, there are breaks on the bottom. A very consistent pattern with the species. And speaking of the pattern, look, there's two spots on the body where one little band becomes two, and there's another one, but flipped. There's also a band that becomes nothing. There it is. Just ends. Well, back into the field you go. Well, that would be all for this video. So, as always, thank you for watching. All right, back you go, mister.